back. There we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so what we're going to try and talk about today, a little bit about managing your career, what software disruptions meant uh, for this industry. Um, I'll talk a little about you know, the mechanics of managing your career, and then Ken's going to come up and talk about some of the specific technologies we've seen uh, and the change we're seeing uh, as we move into uh, this cloud world. So let's talk about managing your career. Um, the first thing is managing your career has really been a series of steps, and uh, if you use me as an example, um, sometimes it can seem like you're on a, on a path where you're just wandering around. Um, but, but second, you may have to step backwards to make two steps forward. Uh, something I've personally done a couple of times uh, when I've jumped into the management world or I jumped into the cloud world, I actually had to take a role that maybe was something a step back from what I did before. But it really came down to what were my longer term career goals, what I want to accomplish, and then how can I actually use those goals to guide my career and make some steps around it. And as you establish your goals, think about what you want to try and achieve long term. Um, I knew I wanted to, to have a position in, in the cloud team uh, to run a large global group, but I had to make a couple of steps in order to get there. And you also have to have contingency plans. You know, there may be only one role that does the job you want to do. Well, if you don't get that role, what are the, what are the options? What are the different steps you may have to try and take in order to get there? And, and, then, and then lastly is you know, seek help. Um, find a coach, find a mentor. Uh, but try and seek out different ways uh, to get help. You know, again, you own your own career. Um, it's not up to you or your manager to own that career for you. Um, but also seek help. Seek help from peers, seek help from your leadership team, uh, seek help from um, uh, friends and, and others in the industry. So I usually break down career development uh, into three basic categories. I call them the three E's. Uh, starting off, the, the first one's pretty easy, education. If you want to make a transition in your career, the first step, obviously, is education. You need to know the material, right? For us uh, on the engineering side, you know, there are a number of ways. Uh, I spend countless hours just reading, right? Uh, I you know, do online sessions. There's formal classwork you can go to. Uh, but th that's the easy part of it around, uh, around you know, education. And if, you know, you're all here at a conference. This is obviously a step that you're making toward uh, developing your career. The, the second step is around experience. And this is the hard one, right? So how do you get experience? Let's say you're moving from a networking world into a cloud world, networking world into an application world. How do you actually get experience doing that? Uh, what I've done and what I've counseled a lot of my engineers to do um, is seek out projects. You know, the best way to get a new job is actually to start doing that job. So uh, seek out some cross-functional projects. Seek out uh, an opportunity to work in a group where maybe you can start to develop this new skill and begin to practice that new skill. So it's not just about, well, I have gone out, I've got educated on it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land that new role, whether it's in your organization or, or outside your organization, but you really you know, look at, at work assignments, cross-functional projects, uh, shadow and mentoring are two powerful tools. If you know someone who's already in the industry or already has that type of role, uh, and you can either shadow them or get mentoring from them, is an excellent way to try and get some experience with a, with a given role. And the third is something that I find is even more difficult. So you go from education, you know, I get that. As an engineer, you know, I have an engineering background, engineering degree, I get the education piece. Experience I kind of get, hard to get. But then there's this third piece around exposure. And a lot of us don't really think about that. Like if, if, if you want to get into a new role, if you want to learn a new skill set, you want to get a job as an app developer or as a cloud software SE, um, you've got to get some exposure around it. You've got to be able to show and demonstrate you actually have that experience, and that the people who may be potential employers uh, have exposure to your skill set. Um, one of the best ways, obviously, through networking. You know, join some peer groups. Um, DevNet, a perfect example of trying to, you know, get some exposure. Uh, speaking engagements, being able to uh, get an industry panel uh, and, and, and speak about a topic, getting more exposure, showing that you have different skill sets. The other thing that I've also done as I've made some career transitions is any new role that I looked at, I, looked, I, I built a base in, of current skill sets in my current role. Uh, for example, uh, I do a lot of speaking, right? I do a lot of public speaking, I do a lot of sessions like this. Um, I've taken that skill set and moved it into a new role, so I, I, I work on a base and I also have a lot of leadership management experience. I take that base, I bring it to a new role where I have to, you know, and I use that to kind of jumpstart my new role as I learn 
and try and accelerate into that new career. So always know that you want to build a basis of, of either a technology, um, a leadership skill set, uh, potentially a, um, a development skill set, being able to take that and transition it from uh, your new role to your, from your current role to your new role. And then the other thing around building uh, your career is really researching the role. What do you want to do? So if you want to choose the right career path, uh, think about what kind of role do you want to do, right? And get very specific. You know, look at different roles. Different people may be doing doing these jobs. Uh, inspect yourself. Seek feedback. Build sponsorship and, and build that peer network. And and the one thing, uh, as I've gone my last slide, as I as I wrap this this part of it up, is to make four lists. And and think about how you want to approach your career goals first. What are your strengths? What do you like to do? What gets you up in the morning? That's the easy one, right? I know what motivates me, right? I know what, um, what gets me out of bed, what, you know, when, when I get done with a, with a hard day, if I accomplish something along this, it makes me feel good. The second one's a little more difficult. Areas to avoid. What do you not like to do, right? Um, there are things, I, I am not a very good, um, oh, I'll pick it, right? But, Think of the things that you just, you don't enjoy doing, you don't really have a good time doing, things that you procrastinate. Uh, paperwork drives me nuts, right? I forever am missing deadlines on getting out uh, material or paperwork or you know, whatever that administrative stuff is, I can't stand it, it, it drives me nuts. It's a, it's a, it's a hard part of the job, but, but you have to do it. So, what, so I'm not gonna take a role where I have a lot of that detail stuff I have to worry about. Now, this thing's just, going forward. Then, then the next list you want to make are, what is it that you want to do? So once you feel like you'll make a list of things you like, things you don't like, things you're good at, things you're not good at, what kind of job do you want to do? What are your, what are your goals, um, both professionally and personally? Uh, and the two of them really do come together. Um, I'm married, uh, have a pretty large family, uh, extended family, you know, where I live on the East Coast. Um, I know I can't move. I know I'm pretty tied to where I am. So that, that drives a lot of my career choices, right? If I wanted to move into certain roles inside Cisco, I'd probably have to move to San Jose, right? So I know that certain roles, th th that's, that's a career choice and it's a personal choice that I've had to make and I've had to deal with that, right? I've had to accept that this is how I want to guide my career. So I've, I've chose roles that are more in the field and, more, and roles that require me to travel and it's a little more of a global role, but they're trade-offs you have to make and your personal life does affect your professional life as well. And then the last one is what kind of job would, do you want to have? Um, in this cloud world, let's say you want to be a cloud engineer. You want to be a pre-sales engineer covering cloud technologies. Um, find someone who's in that role and interview them. Talk to them. Figure out what that role is. Figure out what they do every day. What you may found out, find out is when you interview someone in that role and you talk to them, that it may align with your strengths but there also may be a significant portion of that role. If you don't like to travel, and you want a role where you know, travel is a, a key component to that role, well, that may not be the best role for you. So make sure you're actually weighing those pros and cons. Really do your research and homework on, on the type of skills, the, the type of job requirements, the travel requirements, whatever they may be uh, of that role. And like I said, do you know someone who has that role that you want to have someday? Go out, interview them, and talk to them. You know, and just wrapping up this part of it is, you know, I talked about the education experience piece. You know, career certifications are a big part of that. We launched a number of new, uh, new certifications. When I'm hiring cloud engineers, when I'm hiring cloud you know, systems engineers or cloud architects, um, I'm looking for industry certifications. I'm looking for people who have certifications um, in, in you name it across uh, the various cloud disciplines. But I'm looking for those various certifications. Right, so again, another example here of just building that education experience. The next up, I want to, uh, I want to welcome up uh, Ken Owens, who, Ken's had a, a pretty, um, pretty successful career managing some of these transitions as well, where he's, I'll let Ken walk through it, but Ken uh, joins us as a CTO at Cisco uh, covering cloud technologies, but before that you had a number of roles as well. Right. Thanks, Robert. Thanks everyone for being here this afternoon. So I. Kind of like uh, Robert, I want to kind of take you through a little bit of, of my background and then kind of how I thought through some of the decisions and, and changes I wanted to make. And so, um, you know, the first thing that I think you want to try to realize is that technology changing and shifting will impact your career. It will, it will cause you to look at 
at making changes and how you should modify and, and address your current career path. And so, you know, when I first started out, uh, a lot of interesting things were happening in the network. I was electrical engineering. I had done a lot of things with electrical optics and, and with lasers and with physics and, and really enjoyed just, you know, solving complex problems and, you know, went into a, a great um, service provider company, did a lot of interesting network. Network and voice was just starting to converge. There were a lot of this disparate lands everywhere. Um, so you had a lot of different like, you know, network LAN technology, you had the network WAN technology starting to evolve. And there was a lot of interesting um, changes and consolidation and convergence starting to, you know, be talked about and um, got involved in things like the standards industries. We went to a lot of IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force in the early days of IP and MPLS and kind of looking at how, you know, all these different technologies were, were going to start coming together, like frame relay and TDM and voice and video and, and um, IP technology. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And as I was in that, sort of in that environment, I started looking at, well, you know, from a networking standpoint, this is cool, but I'd rather kind of build, you know, my engineering background. I was like, I want to go build something, right? So I went and joined an equipment company and started kind of building routers and building, you know, ATM switches and just, was, to me, it was a lot more fun to build the actual hardware and the components needed to, to kind of build the, the network of the future versus just using the network, right? And so I, 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 that kind of interested me, so I jumped into that, will, that area, uh, did a lot of modeling, learned a lot about like standards and process and you know, how development happens, how software development happens, how hardware development happens. This was back in the days where every hardware company had to build their own ASICs, right? They thought they could differentiate on ASIC technology, and so I got to be part of that whole, you know, building ASICs, designing ASICs, doing FPGA design, and, and throwing that stuff into, you know, really interesting um, development environments and seeing the manufacturing process happen. And that was a lot of fun. And then I was like, you know, this is cool, but, you know, everyone's doing a startup that I know, right? I'm still working for a big, you know, gigantic equipment vendor. I think it'd be a lot of fun to go actually do some kind of a startup. And um, this was like, you know, they were trying to do more system on the chip stuff. There wasn't a system on the chip yet. And they were trying to do more network processing and, and local switches. And so I joined a little startup company and kind of did some, some ASIC design and some network processor FPGA um, design. And the, um, what was really interesting about that to me was that, you know, this was like getting into the very basics of engineering, right? Going into the transistors and the resistance and doing the designs at the very lowest level. But I knew from that point, you know, how this would go into a router or a route processor blade. I knew how it would go into a switch fabric blade. I understood how the uh, overall networking would work. And so I kind of, even though I started out broad, I went down very narrow. All of my experience from being at a, at a service provider going down to uh, an ASIC chip design, all of that came together. And I understood in the end how this process was going to work. And that was very interesting to me. So I started thinking, hey, this is kind of cool. I like doing this. I'm on a startup company having fun, doing lots of different jobs. And then the bubble bust, right, back in the 90s. And so when that happened, I was like, you know, where do you go? Well, you go to somewhere that you can get more security. So I went and did network security architecture for banks. Or you can't be more, you can't have better job stability in the time of a downturn than a bank, right? And so I started working in the, in the banking industry and that's how I kind of got into to seeing how these processes and how all these different components come together to deliver services. They're like, oh, so this is actually why we have networks to point, get this application that that customer over there wants to access his data. Oh, it all makes sense, it clicks, right? And, and so that was kind of fun to get involved in that. And then as, as that evolved, the need to do things quicker and the need to be more, more agile brought us into this whole cloud environment, right? And so cloud really changed my, my career yet a, you know, a sixth time now because it's like, hey, what I've been doing makes sense, but I need to automate it, I need to orchestrate it, right? So I started looking at new technologies and new things around how you, how I, you know, network didn't really change. What network is meant to do didn't really change from the beginning of my career to now, but how you've, uh, we automated, how we allow that network to dynamically change a lot quicker, that's changed a lot. Um, 
And then, and then the last thing with, with my kind of my um, feedback is you want to have, you know, just like you want your customers to have an understanding of why they would buy your product or why they like what you're doing, you want your career to have that same feeling, right? You have to enjoy what you're doing. You have to love what you're doing, right? If you don't love what you're doing, then that's just, it makes you unhappy. It makes you a difficult person to be around. So you want to really look at how do you make sure that you're doing something you really enjoy doing every day. Um, which then leads me to sort of some of the technology things around every company is becoming a software company, right? So whatever role you're in today, I don't know any of you guys, I don't know what you do today, but whatever you're doing today, you need to start thinking about how does software impact what I'm doing? How do I become better and learn more about how I can leverage software to do my job better, or to advance my career further? Um, you know, one, uh, one example is that there's a, um, you know, there's an impact that pretty much everyone can find pretty quickly. Um, the way I kind of run my, my teams for the last 10 years has been kind of like an operational scrum, right? I kind of organize my team as I would organize like a development project. And so I, I have different roles. I don't really have like a, you know, I don't have like a, a, a set title with any organization for a, for a role, but I just sort of have organizationally I adopt as new technologies come out, as new capabilities come out, <laughs> I kind of adopt what I'm doing with my organization to kind of address the new structure. And then from a, there's also ways you can transform the way your career is evolving, right? So in some cases you may not be able to just sort of stop what you're doing as you're working and just, you know, continuously improve on that. You may have to actually just cut your career where it's at and jump to a whole new career. And it, it's gonna still leverage all your experience and everything you've learned through that process, but in some cases you can't just continue evolving where you're at. You have to sort of make a jump. And that's, that's something that a lot of companies, if you look at organizations like, um, you know, I always kind of bring up like retail, like Amazon really transformed the whole in, entire retail industry. Nobody had thought about doing retail in that way before, and now every large retail is doing things online. And so you have to sometimes think outside of your comfort zone to say, okay, how do I transform what I'm doing? And that, that's a key point. Um, and so some of the areas that you might want to grow in, um, there's a lot of interesting new technologies now. If you're technology and being in a technology conference, where I kind of felt like most of you guys would be very technology oriented. Um, you know, you want to kind of look at systems engineering approach to different career options, right? So how do you get more of a breadth, you know, a wide breadth of what you need to do in this, in this career you're going down the path of and make it more, touch more points of that, of your career so you can be more visible to those around you. Um, some of the silos and systems pieces, right? So how do you sort of get out of the silo that you're in? If you're, if you're in a network team, that, that in itself, you may be like an automation engineer, but if you're stuck in a network team, that may be a difficult uh, mindset that people around you would have of you because they see you in that team, you work with the network team, so therefore you're a network engineer. You might be like, hold on a second, I'm not a network engineer anymore, I'm this, right? And so try to help break down those silos of when people meet you in your, in your, in your career, let them know what you want to do and what you're good at doing and don't be afraid to say, I am a network engineer, but I have these skill sets. Let me use these skill sets, right? Um, the, the, the two things below that I think are important to, to keep in mind. Um, the first one is sort of this whole automation. So everything around you is becoming more automated and more agile. And so try to address that in your career. How do you automate more and more of what you're doing? How do you improve your day-to-day -day job using automation? How do you orchestrate things and around your day-to-day -day tasks so that, so that instead of becoming, you know, instead of being kind of, I call it interrupt driven, if you, if you sit at your desk all day on your cube and you're writing some, some provisioning or writing some kind of software and you're waiting for someone to come in and interrupt you and say, hey, I need you to go fix X or I need you to go look at Y, then to improve your career, you should be looking at how do you automate some of these systems so that when X happens, it automatically gets addressed so you never get interrupted by that person because you already automatically, you know, remediated whatever that issue was. Um, and when it comes to, like, you know, areas to grow your knowledge, um, 
here at DevNet, there are a lot of opportunities to, to take training. There's some hands-on learning labs out here. There's classroom instruction like this that you can attend. They'll talk about new technologies like Docker and microservices, and you might hear about some things from like Kubernetes and Kafka and, and like you know Storm and, and big data type of, of um, training here. Definitely things to do. There are also classes you can take um, outside of you know a classroom environment. You can take online classes and kind of learn a lot of things. I spent probably, and I think you know Robin didn't mention this, but we spend probably 20% of our time throughout a week just researching and reading new things online, right? That's the only way to really keep up with what's happening is to dedicate some time every week to just research what's happening, you know, find a couple of um, tech blogs, find a couple of technical um, online uh, news um, articles that you can kind of know or keep you up to date on new things coming out and follow those, those people and look at what they're saying and talking about. Um, and then, uh, you know, the last thing is, as you kind of look at making this transition, you know, like I mentioned, there are engineers also, before I forget, there are engineers here you can meet and, and talk with. So uh, I think just down the hallway over by the, um, um, by the Water Solutions area, before you get to the Water Solutions area, there's like a meet the engineers. So you can sign up and meet with engineers that are doing things that are interesting. Um, you're here in, in the demo zone right now, so you know where you're at. You can go talk and see some of the technologies here in the demo environment. There are some sessions. Uh, this afternoon, we got quite a few sessions going on in the DevNet zone, and tomorrow afternoon that are kind of around cloud technologies. There's some classroom instructions as well that you can attend throughout the next couple of days. Um, and so there's sort of just a bunch of different things that we've outlined. I've highlighted a couple of them um, around PaaS and around uh, Docker containers, Hadoop. And so there's lots of good things to do and see here, and so I welcome you to to attend and look forward to, um, to interacting with you throughout the conference. Thank you. Any last minute Q&A? I think we have like two or three minutes left. If there's any Q&A, we're, we're certainly here and available. Cool. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to ask like, so what if you're unemployed? And so you've kind of got displaced by some of the technologies that are coming up and you're trying to jump back in it, but you know, time is short. Are there critical focus things that like everybody kind of should be looking to make this stuff work and be valuable to the workforce? I'm displaced, or if you, just even if you don't, um, if you are in a job today and you could be displaced in the future, remember that most employees will help you with some sort of uh, training when you get displaced, not always, but always ask and kind of see what you can get from your employee to help you kind of up improve your skills to that next, to get to that next level. Yep. The second thing I'll do is going back to what Robert was saying is really look at what do you like doing, what really excites you and motivates you, and then look at some of the new technologies, like the things around microservices infrastructure and, and things like DevOps, and, and especially, are you a network engineer? Or? Systems. Systems. So virtualization and systems, so think about cloud now and look at, you know, look at OpenStack, there's lots of OpenStack career opportunities out there. Um, if, you, if you've studied and understand VMware, you can make an easy transition to OpenStack or any other cloud type of technology. So yeah, that, definitely would recommend starting with those, with those areas. That's what I was trying to say about you know, just adjacent technologies. So again, just you know, make a list of things you like to do and you know that you have strong skill sets in. But then if you know you want to make a career transition and that's where industry is moving, figure out how you take the basic skills that you have and apply it to a newer, different kind of role. So if you could take 80% of what you already have and learn 20% new, figure out what the 80% is, and figure out what you need to do to learn that, that 20%. And then the, the education, the experience and exposure piece wor works as well, because you still need to go out and, um, and, and, and take a hard look at what kind of roles are out there, interview for potential employers, I mean, put yourself out there, you know, try and get involved in different industry forums, try and build your resume around that. And if, just one last thing, if you are a CC, you know, CCIENA, NP, right, whatever the acronyms yeah. are, we have added those cloud certifications into those programs now too, right? So we, 
definitely, if you have some certification, even if it's like a Cisco powered from a VMware partner, right? Definitely talk to the training department here at Cisco Live. There's a lot of different training areas you can go talk to them, and they'll help you identify how do you move into that certification. So, cool. Ken and Rob, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You, thank you. Don't forget to.